CBSC submitted before the Supreme Court its evaluation criteria for awarding grades and marks for the 12th class exams. For the 10th and 11th, marks in the best of three from five papers and term exams will be considered. For the 12th, marks obtained in unit, term and practicals will be taken into account. Big news coming in on the new evaluation criteria announced for class 12 for CBSE students. Remember, CBSE 12th board exams has been cancelled. The, the anxiety and the suspense was over what would be the process of evaluation. Now we are getting to know that CBSE has submitted the evaluation criteria before the Supreme Court for awarding grades and marks for the 12th class exams. For the 10th and 11th, marks will be in the form of best of three from five papers and term exams that uh, will be considered. But for 12th class, marks obtained in the unit test in terms and practicals will be taken into account. So all the school internal assessments now will account for the overall assessment uh, and marks that the student is awarded in the 12th board exam since the actual exams were suspended owing to uh, covid now what we have is a situation where an alternative is being put into place for evaluation of the 12th class students those who are under the cbse board So this new evaluation criteria has been submitted to the Supreme Court for awarding grades and marks to the 12th uh, class exam students. For the 10th and 11th as well, a new criteria has been announced. In the case of 10th and 11th, marks in the form of best of three subjects in the term exams is what will be considered. But for 12th, over and above the term exams, the unit tests and practicals, all of this will be taken into account. So throughout the year, the various assessments that were conducted for the 12th class students, all of it will now come under the ambit of uh, awarding the grades and the marks to the 12th class students, those who are under the CBSE board. Now, this is a big development. There was a lot of uh, debate around whether there should be an alternative criteria, alternative evaluation process set in place so that the students can be given a, a specific percentage of marks as their qualifying marks for 12th class board. In the absence of an actual exam, it became critical to have an alternative process in place. And now finally, we have the evaluation criteria announced by CBSE and it is being submitted in the Supreme Court uh, in terms of how they are going to now go, go and go ahead and award marks to the 12th class board. They've decided to do it basi on the basis of unit tests, terms and practicals for the entire year for the 12th class exams. that we have on this uh, the back and forth and the submissions that were made in court is uh, available to us and what we are getting to know as of now is that the CBSE has told the Supreme Court that the class 12 results will be decided on the performance of class 10 30 percent weightage class 11 30 percent weightage and class 12 40 percent weightage this is another big takeaway that we have now uh, information that has just come in. CBSE submitted before the Supreme Court its evaluation criteria for awarding grades and marks for the 12th class exams. For 10th and 11th, marks in the form of three from five papers in the term exams will be considered. For class 12, marks obtained in the unit, term and practicals will be taken into account. The weightage also is now being announced. So for the class 12 results, Performance in 10th, 30% weightage, 11th, 30% weightage and class 12, 40% weightage based on the unit test terms and practicals. Okay, let's understand this further from Minakshi Bhanja tracking all the proceedings in court. Yes, Minakshi, over to you. Help us understand the development so far on what the CBSE has submitted 
in its new evaluation criteria for the 12th class board exam students of CBSE? Well, this is in pursuance with the earlier directions of the Supreme Court where the top court had asked for the CBSC to think of an alternative grading mechanism or formula and that uh, today is being submitted by the Supreme Court for class 10 and 12 uh, exams in best of three uh, from five papers. Uh, interim exams will be considered for class 12 exams obtained in unit uh, term and uh, practicals would also be taken into account. That is one of the submissions uh, the CBSC is making uh, for the top court as we speak. And the Supreme Court has been informed by the CBSC uh, that the, uh, the standard 12 results would also be decided on the basis of uh, performance in class 10, which uh, would have 30% weightage. Class 11 would have 30% uh, uh, weightage and another uh, evaluation mechanism of class 12 would also have 40% uh, weightage. So uh, that is happening right now because remember, on the earlier occasion, it was the Supreme Court which had asked for CBSC uh, to furnish details, submit details about the alternative grading mechanism for students. Absolutely. So now we'll have to see how this is received because after all the biggest stakeholders are the students who could not appear for their 12th class CBSE board exams since that remains cancelled now because of COVID and this alternative way of evaluating them. Will the students be happy with this? Of course, it is going to evoke reactions from all quarters. We'll have to leave it at that. Minakshi, thanks for joining us. So important thing here is that now we have the criteria announced by CBSC, not just that, they have submitted it before the Supreme Court, the new evaluation criteria for awarding grades and marks to the class 12 exams. For 10th and 11th, marks in the form of three from five papers in term exams will be considered. For class 12, marks obtained in the unit tests, terms and practicals during the year will be taken into account. The weightage will be now in the form of Class 10, 30%, class 11, 30%, and class 12, 40%. So then this overall uh, figure will be rounded off as the final marks for the student in class 12 board exam. So it's not only based on performance of class 12, but what they did in the 10th and 11th will also now come into the picture. Now, this is a huge departure from what would have been the case if the board exams were held. Since the board exams have been cancelled, now this is the alternative that have been put into place. Uh, in fact, what we're getting to know is that uh, there were a lot of submissions made, a lot of options being considered, a lot of brainstorming that has gone into this. The CBSE hearing uh, began earlier today in the Supreme Court. Uh, where a number of submissions were made in terms of how this could work out in the best interest of everyone. The idea was to focus on the safety and health of the students, not to in any way jeopardize their health and safety by holding the offline exam. So decision was taken unanimously to not have the CBSE board exams this year. In its place will be now a new evaluation criteria that has just been announced. So we are getting breaking news information on uh, the evaluation criteria for class 12 where CBSE has submitted before the Supreme Court its evaluation criteria for awarding the grades and marks for the class in uh, 12 exams for the 10th and 11th marks in the form of three from best five papers in the term exams will be considered for class 12 marks obtained in unit term and practicals will be taken into account. Minakshi joining us on the phone line. Minakshi, uh, this is again extremely important to understand and which is why we want to emphasize clearly 
on the points that have now been announced by CBSE on what their new evaluation criteria will be for the 12 class board exam students, Minakshi. Well, uh, yes, on also some context uh, that uh, the uh, CBSE had been asked on an earlier occasion to come out with the alternative evaluation mechanism by the Supreme Court itself. And as, you, uh, as we speak, the CBSC announces uh, this new evaluation criteria for class 12 students. Uh, this goes on to state how 40% marks based on unit or uh, unit tests, midterms, uh, and pre boards for class 12, 30% marks based on theory of final exams of class 11, and 30% marks based on best of three. Uh, subjects of class 10 uh, would be taken into account by the CBSC. So uh, this is obviously in pursuance, like we are saying, of uh, the earlier direction of the Supreme Court, uh, which had sought this alternate uh, mechanism for grading and evaluation uh, from the CBSC. And that alternate mechanism has been presented by the Supreme Court, uh, by the CBSC to the Supreme Court just a short while back. Okay, so let me get in Lata Vaidyanath, an educationist, joining me on the phone line. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, important uh, d development here, something that will have huge implications for all those students who were supposed to appear for the 12th class board uh, exams in CBSE, but now they will have to be uh, assessed on the basis of this new criteria. Uh, if you could go through the details that were submitted, are you happy with this new alternative of having 30%, 30%, 40%, 10th, 11th, 12th. That's the overall weightage that will be given to the assessment process. And of course, the finer details are there on how this works out. But important part is all these three years, 10th, 11th, and 12th will come into account when, when uh, calculating their marks for 12th board. Um, so uh, the, my views on the follow is as follows. For example, I think first thing that the government mm. needs to keep in mind, and perhaps CBSC has done so effectively, is to keep in mind that the entire country and the privileges of the privileged and not so privileged, all of that has to be kept in mind. Therefore, I think the decision is fine in terms of, in terms of um, mm. coming to the conclusion that 30, 30, and 40, because... 30 was authentic offline 10th board that these children have acquired. Secondly, the other 30% of class 11, most of which was also offline, is also fine because they are authentic and one-time decision. Now, coming to the 40% of class 12, interestingly, schools have had both online mm -hmm. and offline exams. And if we take a complete picture of what happened through the year, and arrive at a conclusion of what the 40 should be. I think the gist of it, without going into the details which have yet not reached us, I think from the court's point of view and from the point of view of how CBSC schools exist across the nation, across the states, in remote areas, in other areas which are difficult to access, where everything is so difficult in terms of internet availability or whatever the provisions the schools can afford, I think this is a fairly good decision. Yes. So, uh, in terms of details, ma'am, what we do know is that class 10 tenths uh, marks will be based on the average theory component of the best three performing subjects of the main five. So, that is your 30%. Then class 11 marks again based on the theory com component of the final exam. That's your other 30%. And then for 12th, now this is where uh, do you think there could be problems because then the schools and the internal assessment is all you have. Uh, you do not have an overall integrated process of assessment then because this obviously uh, will be calculated purely on the basis of what the schools have assessed internally of a particular student, isn't it? End of the day, assessment as understood should be mm -hmm. trusted. Therefore, just because the other two are considered yes. authentic because it happened offline and by the board's direction, and this one is an average performance during the whole year, and all these decisions mm. are based on the difficult circumstances that the pandemic has made it uh, impossible for schools to understand. 
there, I mean, to function. Therefore, I do think yes. that trusting the school mm. for what the child's performance is like is important because end of the day, no educator mm -hmm. should not yes. should go untrusted. And therefore, also let us look at assessment. A one-time final exam, we all know, mm -hmm. is not necessarily the best record of the child. We do not know what were the very difficult circumstances that the family Absolutely. faced, the child mm -hmm. faced in all these parts of the world, in, in, and especially in mm -hmm. our country and the remote areas. So when we look at that, let's trust mm -hmm the schools because that is the only possibility. And it's also interesting that I think the board has taken all measures mm. to get as authentic as possible. The practical exams were almost complete in many schools. Those that were not have received correct guidelines required for the same. And I do think that assessment is what the, if a teacher can teach, she can also assess. Let's trust them for the welfare of children, especially during these difficult Absolutely. times. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think so some very important points made by Lata Vedinatsa and really appreciate your perspective. Yes, really appreciate your perspective that, you know, there's not, we don't have to just stick to one particular kind of assessment where students are subjected to a two hour or three hour sitting and writing an exam. There can be alternative processes. And if we have ignited or, uh, you know, if we have initiated one such alternative assessment process, there should be nothing to be doubting it at all. Gitanjali Kumar, CBSE counsellor also with us. Gitanjali Kumar, you know, it is, of course, after much delay and causing much anxiety to students that finally we've come to an evaluation criteria. Uh, educationists that we've spoken to, at least the one I just spoke to, Lata Vaidyanathan says this sounds very fair. Now, how did you arrive or how do you think that this was arrived at, this 30-30-40 uh, formula? And why do you think it's fair? See, I am basically a psychologist offering helpline services to CBSC. So I am representing CBSC okay. as well as not representing CBSC in terms of the committee which decided. But I will go by what Ms. Lata Vadyanathan just okay. said, that in the present circumstances, which are such different and such difficult circumstances, and all a, a policy which looks at the welfare, well-being, and all good of the mass of students. That has been the ethos of the committee which has formulated this policy, I suppose, I think. And I, 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 and I wish it is like this, and I think it is like this. So if it is like this, then as schools also look at welfare of children, schools also want... It should, no harm should be brought to the child's future. So this policy, which is trying to take an average of the assessment of the ch uh, child's uh, last few years spent in the school, I think it's a fair policy because in the present circumstances, if we decide on not okay. to conduct the examinations, keeping the child's health and safety in mind, and even, even the staff, even the educators, so if the lives cannot be brought at risk, then something which has to come as a fair and an even uh, game player, then it, this policy seems fair to me. And children will have to trust the system and parents will also okay. have to trust the system. Yes, so you're saying that this is the next best alternative and that is what is being worked out. But I also want to understand, Gitanjali Kumar, that, you know, when you look at the international boards, the IG, uh, IB or the, I, the Cambridge board, in those cases, you already have a backup, you know, you already have a backup uh, which is approved and ready in case of any eventuality that just gets activated automatically. So you never have to go through this process of anxiety and suspense. What we had to go through for students of CBSE and ICSE, going forward, is this an important learning that you do need alternative process of evaluation already in place? So in case an uh, offline exam of having students appear in person does not work out, there is always an alternative that one can uh, fall back upon. I that, but we also have to keep in mind the diversity and the extremities of our country where we still have a problem in a, in a smooth mm. conduction of an online class in the remote areas of our country, where a teacher has to sit on a hilltop to deliver her online lesson in some play, part in Chhattisgarh or in JNK, where she's uploading the lesson. Keeping the diversity in mind, mm. keeping the, the uneven distribution of resources mm. in mind, I think uh, uh, what we aspire for, what we wish for, will still take some more time to arrive at.
I don't deny that we shouldn't have an alternative right. plan. We definitely should have, but maybe we'll take some more time to come. This mm. pandemic has brought a sweeping change in, in the educational scenario by uh, initiating a very fast spin of the mm. online classes, but we still have miles to go. Mm. There is no denial about that. Yes, and that's what Lata Vaidyanathan was also saying, that this could, for all you know, be a blessing in disguise. Because what this does is that by trial and error, you are now going to test an alternative system. And for all you know, that might work even better. So do you, as a CBSE counsellor, think that that could be then going forward part of the system or kept uh, as an alternative for good for any future eventuality? Inertia has dissolved. The momentum has already begun. We just have to arrive at that desired, designed mm. destination. The momentum is already set in. A lot of schools are conducting the online exams, offline exams, the uh, pre-boards or whatever they've done. So somewhere schools are trying to come up with alternatives. CBSE is also trying to come up with the alternatives. But the problem is these cards, uh, the uneven distribution of resources. So we will take some more time to arrive at a uniformity of uh, resources available, uniform distribution of resources. A lot of e-channel, e-vidya channels have come in. The <coughs> Doordarshan channels have spinned up. A lot of things are coming up, but the collection of resources has to happen at national level. A national conglomerate has to come up. The national uh, school education council has to set up. There are a lot of pro uh, proposals in the new education policy also regarding this. Yes. So let's let's uh, sort of brainstorm on all those options, and then uh, you know, for for all future purposes, perhaps there should be an alternative system already in place. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Gitanjali Kumar and Lata Vaidyanathan, for giving us your informed opinions.